I would like to tell you the story of the most controversial incident of my TV career. The crazy and complex story I have never told until now. If you've followed my career, heck, if you haven't followed my career, you probably know about my on-air clash with Richard Sherman, which occurred on March the 7th of 2013. I thought about that clash the other day when I read that Richard Sherman is in, quote-unquote, deep talks with Amazon to be part of their new NFL coverage. So this could be the end of Richard's playing career, though the story did point out he is staying in shape just in case another opportunity arises in the National Football League. My incident with Richard occurred after his second year in the NFL when he had been on a national campaign to trash talk his way into being a household name in America. Richard Sherman had trash talked Tom Brady. You might remember the game October 14th of 2012 up in Seattle. Seattle pulled it out 24 to 23, and you might recall that Richard yelled at Tom Brady after the game, you mad, bro? Richard had trash-talked Darrell Rivas via Twitter and on all sorts of social media. He had gone after all sorts of receivers from Roddy White to poor Michael Crabtree. Now for my backstory, and I want to emphasize this is my story because this is my show, my point of view, maybe Richard has a completely different point of view. I don't know. I would love to hear it from Richard. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now for key detail number one. Richard Sherman's representatives had actually asked us if Richard could be on the afternoon show as just an NFL analyst talking nothing but off-season football. And key detail number two, Richard Sherman's reps also asked if we could please steer clear of any of Richard's previous trash-talking controversies. Please, nothing about Brady or about Rivas or about Roddy White or Crabtree or anybody else. Please steer clear. My producer told me that afternoon ahead of that show, quote unquote, he only wants to talk off-season football, quote unquote. We'd be perfect partners for just a half hour. Remember, when you do a two-hour show, now on obviously FS1, Undisputed is two and a half hours. When you're just doing a half hour, it just goes like that. You feel like you barely get out of the blocks. You barely get warmed up and it's over. So great. Richard can help carry the ball on our second to last afternoon show. Or so I thought. I did let my guard down. And yet, I stress to you, we didn't request Richard. We didn't seek Richard. He sought us. So maybe I should have seen it coming. I don't know. But I let my guard down. That fateful day, my partner Stephen A. was what we call remote. He was in, I believe, in Philadelphia. So he wasn't in studio with me, so I couldn't see or read his face on live TV. Furthermore, Richard Sherman was not in studio that day. I believe he was in L.A. via remote in an L.A. studio. So I could not see or, or read Richard's face at all either as the, this segment unfolded. The next unexpected development occurred when Richard was a little late getting mic'd up. Not sure whose fault it was or what happened. Something went amiss. Somebody was a little late. Somebody had an issue. I don't know. But all of a sudden, my producer says in my ear, maybe a minute out to showtime, 
oh, we, we, we've got to come up with something to talk about for a couple of minutes until he's completely mic'd up. Uh, okay, let's do, has Richard Sherman arrived as the best cornerback in football? I didn't believe he had, but I thought maybe Stephen A. could kick that back and forth before he suddenly joined us live. And the show started, and we did. And, of course, I concluded, no, Richard Sherman has not arrived just yet as the best cornerback in football. I, I made it very clear, not just yet were my words on air. Obviously, it was Darrell Revis. It was still Revis Island. I knew Darrell, loved him as a player, second best cornerback I'd ever seen to the one and only, Neon Deion Sanders, prime time. But Revis was at least in the ballpark, and I'd had some friendly clashes with Darrell about he thought he had surpassed Dion. I, I couldn't go there, and I still can't even remotely go there. But I said, Richard's on the verge. Maybe he's got next, but he hasn't arrived just yet. So we're kicking it back and forth for, I don't know, a minute and a half to two minutes before Richard sits down ready to, to rock. If you don't know what happened at that point, maybe you should just Google it, YouTube it, and watch it. Just, just Google Richard Sherman versus Skip Bayless, and trust me, it will pop up all over the place, many ways, shapes, and forms. Just last night, I attempted to watch it for the first time. I've never watched it before because I participated in it and I can't tell you how painful it became to me for all the wrong reasons. But as I tried to watch it last night, once again, the wounds are still so raw for me. It just tore me apart. I think I finished one version of it. But the point was, as you probably well know, Richard Sherman pretty much ignored Stephen A's first question and attacked me. He personally attacked me. Unrelentingly attacked me. So much for please no controversy today. I immediately felt ambushed, bushwhacked, set up, blindsided. I was suddenly, shockingly, thrust in to a position on air on live TV. We were not live to tape. We were live to live. I was suddenly forced to quote unquote fight without fighting. I, I had to defend myself, quote unquote, with really both hands tied behind my back. I had to try to figure out how to hold my ground while hoping to defuse the potential nuclear bomb that sounded like Richard Sherman was about to be. I, I could only hear his voice, and he was flat out angry. Go watch it. Go listen to it. You'll see. I didn't know Richard Sherman. It was hard to gauge where this was about to go. Was it about to go completely over the cliff? We were on the edge of the cliff. And Richard Sherman said to me, I'm better at life than you are. Richard then called me an ignorant, pompous, egotistical cretin. Richard Sherman then said to me, I'm going to crush you on here. All the while, I was biting through my tongue. I tried to say, Richard, let's not get personal here. Let's keep it within bounds 
football discussion. But it was taking all my own willpower to not fire back personally, to not fight fire with fire. Allow me to quickly digress. As I've said many times, here on this show, I'm a natural born fighter. I'm just a fighter by nature. I love to battle. I love to battle on live TV with my man Shannon Sharp or any of the many people I battled with on TV before. Some good naturedly and some not so much. I've told you in the past, just so you know where I'm coming from, what my psyche was encountering at this moment on live TV. I grew up fighting in a pretty sketchy neighborhood in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I was the oldest of three children. I had to overcome two alcoholic parents, broken home. Somehow, by the grace of God, managed to win a full scholarship to Vanderbilt University, and I was out of there. And I scratched and I clawed against private school kids at Vanderbilt and graduated cum laude. Well, obviously, I knew Richard had gone to Stanford. God bless him for that. And yet, better at life than me? How, how do I even argue that? And in the end, what's the point of arguing that? Because I don't even know where to start with that. Better at life. Better educated. More spiritual more godly than me, more philanthropic. I, I don't know. Where, where do you go with that? I, I wasn't sure, but in the back of my mind, I'm fighting my own psyche and nature a thousand miles an hour trying to figure out how to respond to that. And the point was, I'm pretty sure Richard knew nothing about me. I'm pretty sure if I had engaged personally and said, Richard, where did I go to college? He wouldn't have had any idea. Richard, what do I do? What do I, anything about me personally, I'm pretty sure he had no idea. But he was on fire with his personal attacks. So in these very live moments, the conflict raged in the back of my psyche of Fight back. No, don't. Save the show. Fight. No, save. Save the show. I tried to foot, uh, fight back on just a football level by saying, but Richard, you're playing on what well could be the best defense in pro football and literally having your back are, to me, the best tandem safeties, the most dynamic duo at safety in pro football and Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas. So I, I tried to put it in that perspective while, while not pushing too deep of a button, which could take us right over the cliff. So here's the punchline to this. Would you believe I actually got the highest marks I ever got from John Skipper and the bosses at ESPN for the way I kept my composure during this onslaught from Richard. And in fact, as we hit our first commercial break, our first take producer said in my ear, do you want to keep Richard or do you want to cut him loose? Because it would be my option, if, if it had gotten so personal, I could say, I, I don't want to deal with him anymore. But no, I, I said, keep him. I said, I'm fine to just talk football as we had planned to do, off-season NFL football, if he's fine with it. So the producer then got in Richard's ear, and he said, yeah, I'm fine to talk. And we did. We finished out the show. It was a little awkward and probably a little uncomfortable for both, but I just tried to dive right back into the show and finish it out the way I'd planned to. And I thought it, it turned out fairly well for that final segment. Remember, it's just a half hour. And of course, Richard, quote unquote, crushed me because I got crushed 
on the internet, predictably. Richard Sherman took me to school. Richard Sherman did this, that, and the other. I, I, I expected that, and as you know, I don't have any problem with that. I can live with that. So in the end, I, I guess I did it the quote-unquote right way, which just felt so wrong to me just because my pride was so raw. And I, I guess I quote-unquote won, but I felt like I had lost. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.